Now we're going to move on to an effect that can really make a positive difference. It's called the D clipper. To follow along, go get these two files here, clipped 16-bit and clipped 32-bit inside the working files noises subfolder. What is clipped audio? Well, you're looking at clipped audio. It's audio that was recorded too loud. When you record it too loudly, you see little red marks here, which indicate it's too loud and the audio is being clipped. It's going to sound rough when you listen to it later. Or you could be working with a clip inside Audition, raise the volume way too loud and save it and end up with the same problem. And that's what I did here. I took a file, I increased the volume dramatically, saved it in its original 32-bit floating point bit depth, and then changed the bit depth to 16 bits and saved it that way as well. Let me show you what clipped audio looks like if you reduce the volume level. I'll bring it down and it looks like that, like a flat top haircut or something, or just a sharp edge knife with a few little nicks in it. What's happening is that the waveforms were not allowed to go up all the way or down all the way to create smooth waveforms. They were clipped off at the top, literally like a flat top haircut. I'm going to zoom in there and see if we can spot some of those things. You see how that's going here as I zoom in? I'll zoom in this guy right there. You see that we got these flat areas right there. Look at that. Literally cut off. Even though we reduce the volume here, they still have that flat look to them. No matter how far I bring this thing down, they will remain flat. And what that means is as you listen to it, it's going to sound rough. It's going to sound like your speakers might have been broken, like you might have been playing them too loud and something got damaged. So I'm going to play this now and just listen for the rough edge. Even though it's turned down like this, you'll still hear the rough edge. Yuck, I think you've probably got a sense of what that sounds like. Let me zoom out again so I can track down these flat guys a little more easily. Hang on one second. A little bit farther. There we go. I got some guys right here, so I'll zoom back in on them. Those are those flat areas. And what we need to do is to try to use the D clipper effect, the diagnostic and repair tool, to extend those curves to smooth them out. And doing so will take off the rough edges of the audio. It'll take off some of the rough edges. It's not going to be perfect. You can't repair it all. But it will make it a whole lot better when we use that effect. But this is a 16-bit clip. I want to show you a little object lesson here. I'm going to show you the 32-bit clip. Right now, remember, we've reduced the volume of the 16-bit clip. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the 32-bit clip. I'm going to open it up. And when it opens up, it'll open up to the same area here, because that's how things work when you choose that characteristic inside the preferences. I'm going to double-click on it. We're in the same spot, but the volume hasn't reduced. So there clip. It's flat right there because we're at 0 dBFS. So you can't get audio louder than 0 dBFS. So it's clipped off. But watch this as I reduce the volume. No flat tops. I'll just prove this to you. I'll go back to the other one, the exact same spot. There it's flat. There it's not. Isn't that amazing? That's because this is 32-bit floating point bit depth. And that more or less guarantees that if you have problems where you've made the audio too loud, where you've clipped the audio, you can restore it simply by reducing the volume. So that's a huge object lesson. So when you record audio, try to record at 32-bit. And when you save audio, save it at 32-bit. It can save your life when you come back to it later. I'll play this. You will not hear anything wrong with it. Might be a little loud. Let me turn it down a little bit farther so we don't get those little peak levels there. But it's there you go. Smooth, clean, no issues. Nothing going wrong in terms of that sort of rough edge to it. So that's 32-bit. Let's go back to 16-bit. I'll zoom out again so I can spot those flat areas again so I can use them as little objects to show you when we move forward on this. There's some flat areas there, I think. Let's just zoom in on them. There you go. So we'll see what happens when we apply the D-Clipper. Now, to apply the D-Clipper, we need to open up the Diagnostics panel, which is not here by default. So let's go get that guy by going Window, Diagnostics, and that opens up the panel there. And we've got D-Clipper set already. We need to adjust some settings. Let me pull this thing up so you can get a better look at it. There are multiple settings we can choose here. We can choose a default, one of these presets, but there's no reason to select a preset because these settings are relatively simple and straightforward. So let me just go down here a little bit. Your goal here is to set the best settings to do the best job. There was a time, I suppose, when you tried to have some kind of mid-range because the processors would take too long to make the repairs, but with processors being in pretty good shape these days, just go for the best settings. So the first one says, how much should I reduce the volume by when I'm done fixing it? 
when I'm done filling in these curves. Because if you fill them in, they're going to want to pop up here. They might pop up above 0 dBFS again, creating more clipped audio. So you need to bring them down when you're done. So a good amount is typically to bring them down all the way, and then you can raise them up again later. So bring it down to minus 12 dB. Tolerance is kind of a strange little thing. The lower number is better, but zero is not. So you want to shoot for 1%. That's the best amount. Tolerance specifies the amplitude variation in a clip. It determines, you know, when do you start deciding that something is clipped? The minimum clip size is kind of a poorly named property. It should be called the minimum clipped area or something like that, because we're not talking about a clip like an audio clip. We're talking about the clipped area inside this clip. And so they're talking three samples. When it sees three samples in a row that are flat, then it says, okay, that's clipped. And so the smaller the sample amount, the more likely it is to find a clipped area. So three is the lowest amount you can have, so choose that. Finally, interpolation, cubic versus FFT. Cubic uses what's called a spline curve, which you've seen in some other effects, which seems nice because it makes this nice smooth curve when it repairs the clipped area, but actually the fast Fourier transform is better. And the better size, the one that gives you the best results, is the biggest number, so choose 128. So these are the best settings. Just kind of make note of them if you're going to make any changes to the clipped audio. Go with these settings here. And so now you need to scan it. So there's the button to scan it. So we'll scan it. And it might find a few problem areas, like a couple thousand problem areas. There you go. So once it finds those problem areas, now you need to repair them. And you're looking for the repair button. That's because it's tucked away down here. Let me just lift this guy up here. And there's the repair button. And I click this repair button. It'll take about 30 seconds or so to repair this three minute clip, but I'll just pause the recording while we do that. All right, there we go. And lo and behold, look at that. We're at the same spot now where those flat areas were and they're gone. We reduced the volume way, way down. So that makes it look a little more dramatic, but I'll lift it up a little bit so you can see. There they are, no flat areas. Pretty amazing. I'll zoom all the way out. So we can look for anything that, now that I've raised the volume, it'll be too loud, so I'll bring it down. So nothing that's peaked out, nothing that's hitting above 0 dBFS. There we go. And now the proof will be in the pudding. We're going to listen to it and see how it sounds. If it sounds perfect, I'll be amazed. There probably will be some rough edges to it. Here we go. Yeah, I think if you listen carefully, you spotted this little kind of when it got to the louder passages but it is a whole lot better than it was before. And so this little tool here, this declipper, has pretty much repaired this to a point that it's at least tolerable instead of being horrible. So while the declipper can't restore horrible audio back to perfection, it can take pretty bad audio and make it reasonably good.